What's up there everyone, welcome here to another video on my YouTube channel. Not too long ago, I made a video uh, called Advice for Short Guys from a Short Guy, uh, being 1 meter 64 centimeters or 5.4 feet. I am, uh, yeah, a short guy. And unexpectedly, that video just blew up in a couple of months to over 50,000 views. That's where it kind of is at right now, over a thousand comments, um, thousands of likes. For a small YouTube or relatively small YouTube um, channel, it's, it, it, yeah, it's quite crazy to have that many uh, views on a video. I have to say that I'm very uh, pleasantly uh, surprised by the comments and that they're very kind, uh, very warm, very supportive, I would say. Uh, it's kind of nice to see that the video kind of became a place for short guys for short guys to come and uh, sh sort of sh yeah share uh, their support to each other so i'm very happy uh, that video also made me realize once again that it truly is a problem um or something that guys yeah really struggle with and if you just stumbled on this video first then i would also recommend you to actually check out that first video uh where i share a a whole bunch, I don't know, I think maybe eight or something pieces of advice uh, that I learned from being a short guy. Um, and it seems like from the ratio of the likes uh, that many, many people find it very helpful pieces of advice and also from out of the comments. Uh, so I will link that video also in the uh, description down below. But besides the support of people uh, and the general kind of warmth that I felt from other short guys towards each other, there was a good portion of other guys who were stuck in a certain mindset that I want to talk about. And that mindset is the victim mentality. In the past, I was stuck in this victim mentality for many years. So I want to share some uh, practical tips that helped me to get out of this victim mentality and have now a total different kind of mindset. And I also want to share um, some insights and also one practical tip uh, from out of my studies in psychology that you can use. Before I do that, I do want to make one thing very clear that this is going to be a very difficult video for some people to watch because it's going to be so confrontational. But please bear with me throughout this video. Please don't immediately, uh, I don't know, click on the dislike button or, or go away from this video. Take a couple of minutes to just go through this video and watch and, and try to, yeah, just have an open mindset, which could be very, which can be very difficult, okay? Especially if you see yourself as a victim, being a short guy, and while I'm saying here that you aren't a victim because you are short. You have to understand, and I did say that in the other video too, but I just want to go a little bit more deeper into this before I jump into the three practical tips that I want to share, is that everyone in life, there is not a single soul in, on this planet who has not been dealt bad cards. Everyone, everyone has been dealt bad cards. And there were um, quite a few comments uh, of people from short guys who said like, yes, you're short, but at least you're good looking. Yes, you're short, but at least you're not bald. Yes, you're short, but at least you have, um, and there was one comment who said, you have manly hands. I don't know what that means. You know, these are all people who are in a victim mentality. Because whenever you say the word, yes, but, dot, 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 what you're doing is you're putting yourself in a victim mode and you're giving away any power to become something more. And there are certain benefits to being a victim, right? Um, and this might be confrontational to hear because uh, you get some degree of attention uh, or you know, uh, yeah, you don't have to take any responsibility. That's also kind of, um, yeah, one of the gains of being a victim. If you're still watching, I know you want to be something more than just a victim. And I want to go with you through a couple of tips to become that. I'm actually going to show you something 
from out of uh, my studies in psychology. So there is one therapy called cognitive therapy, uh, which you know, focuses on the cognitive parts, your thinking, your thoughts. And when you're a victim in a victim mentality, you just have very destructive thoughts about yourself. And so it's about learning because there are automatic thoughts happening in you. After a while, you know, if you, you've practiced a certain thought, it becomes automatic. And uh, people who are in a victim mentality, um, they have automatic thoughts going to something negative, something bad about themselves. There's actually here an exercise, a, a practical exercise to start to notice those automatic thoughts and to start to unlearn them and instill new and good and better, uh, more constructive thoughts in you. This uh, page here that I uh, made, you can find that in the description uh, in this video. I will put a Google Drive link there so you can download it. Or you can also, once I went through kind of the description of each one that you see, uh, situation, emotions, automatic thoughts, rational response, outcome. Once I kind of described what each one means and what the exercise is, you could also just, you know, draw this over into a uh, little notebook or something, or you could put it in your phone as well. Uh, so you can, whenever something comes up, like um, a negative thought, you can write this down and go through this exercise. You can see situation. Uh, and what this is about is describe actual event leading to unpleasant emotion or two stream of thoughts, daydream or recollection leading to unpleasant emotion. So an example could be, um, I'm just thinking of an example, one that happened in my life uh, where I was at a party uh, and someone called me, called me short. So actual event leading to unpleasant emotion, uh, someone called me short. So that's the situation. Someone called me short, uh, and this is just an example. Uh, fill in, because it could also be um, a stream of thoughts that you have, a daydream or recollection leading to an unpleasant emotion. When you notice some negative thing happening uh, to do with being a short guy, uh, then do this exercise. Emotion or emotions. So here it's about specifying the emotion. What did you feel? And you can write down more than just one. So I remember that I felt sad. And I also remember that I felt angry at that person. And then two is rate degree of emotion. So one to a hundred. How strong do you feel sad? Uh, how strong did I feel angry? So I would say that I felt maybe like 40 sad and 60 uh, angry. Automatic thoughts. So here is the automatic thoughts that happen. So write automatic thoughts or thoughts that preceded emotion or emotions, and then rate belief in automatic thoughts uh, from one, uh, from zero to 100%. So automatic thoughts, what automatic thoughts did I had uh, when this happened was that I'm not good enough. Um, another thought that I had was that, you know, people always make fun uh, of short guys and then rate that automatic rate that belief in automatic thoughts. So I'm not good enough. Um, let's take another color was 80% and people always make fun of short guys. Um, let's say that was 60%. Let me just change the color here of this. So now it's about the rational response. So let's now rationally think about what just happened here. And this is where it gets really interesting, this exercise. So write rational response to automatic thoughts. So let's let's think about this now, you know. So situation, someone called me short. I felt sad and angry. Uh, the automatic thought that I had was that I'm not good enough, that people always make fun of short guys. Let's rationally think about this whole situation now. So, you know, re the rational response was that, well, that guy was drunk. And people say dumb things when they're drunk. So another rational response to I'm not good enough or people always make fun of short guys. That's not true because my friends, they don't make fun of me. They, they show respect to me. So that's not a rational response. And now rate belief in rational response uh, from zero to 100%. Um, the person was drunk. People say dumb things when they're drunk. Yeah, um, let's say uh, 80%. And my friends do not make fun of me. They respect me. Uh, yeah, that's 100%.
And now the outcome is re-rate belief in automatic dots. So the ones that you had here, right? Re-rate them from zero to a hundred percent. Let's say I'm not good enough. Let's re-rate that uh, based on, you know, those two rational things here that I wrote down that the person was drunk and that my friends do not make fun of me, uh, that they respect me who I am. Let's say that that is more like a 20% now. Um, and that people always make fun of me of being a short guy. That's not true. You know, my friends do not do that. And then specify and rate subsequent emotions from uh, zero to a hundred. So this is basically what emotion do you feel now when you kind of went through that whole uh, process here? Yeah, relief. And love. Let's say relief mm, like 40 and love like 60. This is the exercise. Um, I don't know how it might look now when you just watch this, when you don't immediately feel a strong emotion or something uh, going through you. But uh, it's a really powerful exercise if you would actually come to do it when something happens where you're kind of getting a little bit too emotional and sort of lose a little bit of control uh, in yourself, then just sit down somewhere and just take this page with you. Uh, yeah, that's why it's really handy actually to have this in your phone so you could just type it out to do this. And I can promise you, if you do this, if you can take a moment to clearly think about what happens and do this exercise, you're starting to become aware of the automatic thoughts you have and you're starting to think more about them rationally, uh, about the whole situation. Many times what we think is not so per se true and there's more a bigger picture that we don't see when we're feeling very emotional. Now note that everything takes practice. Uh, the more you do something, the better you get at it. So I can give you this exercise and I can guarantee you this works. This has been proven to work very effectively, but only you can actually use it and do something with it and practice, right? You know, try this out uh, for a month. Uh, try to be aware, make maybe a little uh, system where you can remind yourself, like put it in your phone on your, I don't know, a wallpaper to become aware of your thoughts or to have a little note or on a, a whiteboard or something uh, to write down, be aware of your thoughts. So you just have a, cl a clue uh, to think about this exercise when some kind of automatic bad thought is happening to do this. Because yeah, you have to do this more than just once. Uh, and the more you do this, the more you can have good automatic thoughts to enter your head. And yeah, slowly you can leave this victim mentality and become something more. So the next practical tip here that I have, and, and this one really has made the biggest change, I would say for me personally, uh, but that is to surround yourself with very strong minded uh, people. Uh, so people who have a no excuse kind of mindset, uh, people who are definitely not in a kind of victim mentality, uh, but people who see rather opportunities in, in struggles and in challenges. You truly are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. I know a quote a saying that has been said so many times, but there is a reason for that. And that reason is because it's true. Now, one of the best ways to sort of change the your surrounding and the people that you kind of spend the most time with um, is to listen to audiobooks or to podcasts from people like David Goggins. Uh, and he also has a book called Can't Hurt Me, which I can really recommend uh, to buy the audiobook. Or you can also buy the physical copy, but it's just about having those people around you in your room and the best ways to also, yeah, at least hear their voice. Uh, so Can't Hurt Me, amazing book. David Goggins used to be really, really, really fat. He used to spray cockroaches at houses as a job. He saw himself like a big loser. And in many ways, he would say that today that he was. Uh, and if you look at him now, today, he is an, a retired Navy SEAL. He has run extreme kind of ultra marathons. 
he has done extreme kind of challenges in his life uh, today. And the book Can't Hurt Me is kind of about his life journey and uh, how he came from kind of victim mentality to being uh, a person who just can, can do everything, who has a mental, who has a mindset uh, that there are no things that he can do. Uh, another person is Jacko Willing. Uh, he's also a retired uh, Navy SEAL commander. Uh, he also has a podcast called the Jacko Podcast, and he talks a lot about also mindsets. And uh, it's a really, really also good podcast to check out. And the person Jacko Willing is just is a badass uh, with an extremely powerful mindset. Uh, yeah, that is good to surround yourself with. I will put uh, in the description the names uh, from those people. So and as well like uh, a few episodes, like podcast episodes, to check out and their website, so you can easily find them. Uh, but so David Goggins and Jacko Willing would 100% recommend you to have them in your life more more, and to sort of, yeah, see how their mindset is and to learn from them by spending more time with them. And the last practical tip that I want to share here, it's true doing the, the first two uh, ones, getting good at them, you know, doing the exercise that I provided here and spending more time with more strong-minded uh, people who do not have a victim mindset at all, that this last one is also slowly gonna become something. And that is to see, you know, being a short guy, rather as an opportunity and rather as a, a challenge instead of something, you know, bad or, or something negative about you. Because that's what most people who are in the victim mentality just see. They just see it as a bad thing about them, that they're short, or that they're bald, or that they don't have manly hands. Yes, it sucks. It 100% sucks. I do not want to be a meter 64 centimeters or 5.4 feet. I'd rather be also taller, but if I would, then there would also be a whole bunch of lessons that I would have never learned. And because of those lessons, I also was able to become something more. You gotta understand that at some point, you gotta accept that you're short and that you cannot change this. You know, at a certain age, you're gonna be this height, you know. Uh, if you're still in your teens, then yeah, you're still gonna grow. Uh, but at a certain age, like I am right now in my 20s, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna be like this for the rest of my life. And you gotta accept that and focus 100% on the lessons and opportunities that it has. Yes, it's gonna be difficult, it's gonna be really difficult, but by applying the first and the second tip, you can start to slowly, truly see this obstacle of being short, this challenge of being short as an opportunity to become more, to become a better person, to become a yeah, a person with better skills in other areas. Uh, there's also a therapy called Logotherapy, uh, which is a therapy um, founded by Viktor Franklin. Uh, logos means in Greek uh, meaning, and then therapy, well, therapy. Uh, and it's actually the therapy of finding meaning in life, that that is the most important thing for a human being. And Viktor Franklin was a Holocaust survivor where he basically lived through the worst of worsts what you could possibly live through, and uh, where everything basically is taken away from you. A book that I could recommend is to uh, read Man's Search for Meaning. Uh, it's written by Viktor Franklin, and it's about logotherapy. It's about finding meaning and how important it is. If you can find a meaning in your suffering, in your suffering of being a short guy, that can result in, in the end, seeing the lessons in it and being able to accept that you are short, but that it is okay because there's something that you can do with it. Just to share a couple of his quotes from out of the book. When we are no longer able to change a situation, we are challenged to change ourselves. Another quote, everything can be taken from a man, but one thing, the last of the human freedoms, to choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances, to choose one's own way. And a last quote, those who have a why to live can bear almost any how. With that, I think it's really important to have sort of a purpose in life. I do not think about it at all anymore because I've found meaning in my life, in my work, uh, in the friendships that I have, in my 
girlfriends in everything that I do in life. I found meaning in it. I found reason to be here. There's so many amazing things happening in my life that give me meaning that it doesn't matter too much that I'm short. If you're so much thinking about being short, then you gotta find some kind of meaning in your life where you can put all your attention, all your focus and energy in. And that, yeah, makes you feel good and that you are here for a reason. So these were the three tips that I wanted to share. Um, I hope you will actually try all three of them. And uh, yeah, I like I said in uh, the first tip, I can only give this to you. You can only in the end truly do it. But uh, if you've been watching all the way until here now, then I do feel that you are here willing to become something more than just a victim. Now in the description, you can find all the things that I mentioned in this video. Uh, you can find that there. I will also add anything else that I think of when I'm editing the video uh, that could be helpful on this topic of getting out of this victim mentality. And uh, else, if there's anything else that you found uh, or that you find to be helpful, to be out of this victim mentality or to sharpen your mindsets to become more than just a victim alone, then please drop it down in the comment section down below. Uh, and hopefully we can have a, as well like with the first video that I made on being a short guy, that we can also have a supportive conversation here with each other and uh, help each other. Cause that would be, yeah, that would be great. Uh, you're definitely not alone in this. You're definitely not the only short guy out there uh, who find it challenging to be a short guy. I've had my challenges with it as well. Uh, and yeah, I would say almost everyone who's a short guy. But there's things that you can do on it, like, you know, changing your mindsets. <laughs>